What's up friends? My name is Carly. I am The Blonde Chronicles on Instagram and today I'm really excited to show you guys a very efficient placement. I want to brighten up my beautiful model's hair here. She's got stunning hair and I want to give her something that's lived in low maintenance so she's not always back refreshing it and I want to make it very seamless. My goal here is to make it so that you really can't tell where her natural color starts and that blonde begins. Just a really seamless transition. So I'm really excited to show you guys my foiling placement for that and all the products that I'm gonna to use to keep her hair healthy and still feeling great when we're done with the service. Blonde Me is not just for all over blonding. There are so many services out there that Blonde Me is good for. I can mix my lightener and it's always going to look the same, but is it gonna lift the same? No, because I did not properly mix it. And I fold them up under the other foils. What a tip. French. Have I not taught you this yet? But the reason that I'm using the precision lightener right now is because it has extra chelating agents. Because we're what? All, All about that, that base. base. I have such an awesome opportunity today. I have my sweet Maricel here, and I am gonna be kind of mentoring Maricel through the whole experience of using Blonde Me, how I use it, why I use it, all the things. So anything else that you're like really wanting to learn or get out of today specifically? Mm, no, I'm just excited to see. See it all go down? Yes, yes. I love but it. I'll be sure to ask questions as we go through. Cool, I can't wait. So something cool about this lightener, the precision lightener, is it was created to actually be used on the scalp. So that was actually the intention for it. And precision, the name is just implying it stays where you put it. It's precise and it's there's not a lot of expansion. It's very predictable with what it's going to do as far as moving on the hair or anything. So it was designed to be used on the scalp, but it's such a great tool for in foils as well. And it's super, super versatile. The other cool thing about this lightener that just came out is it has um, anti-metal bond protection technology. So it saves you time. You don't need to use any other additional things. So all the Blonde Me, all the Blonde Me line has that. However, this is the newest edition and it's kind of amazing. So I'm really excited. Me to too, I'm excited. Do you want to try mixing it up and I can just kind okay. of walk you through like maybe what you do with your other Lighter, yes. and then I'll show you the differences yes. and how that works. Okay. Okay. Let's get it all set up here. Okay. So looking at our model, like what would you, how would you mix this? What consistency? I want to know all the things. Okay. I usually do one to one and a half. Okay. Okay. Love that. Yes. Perfect. Hello. So, just so gentle with that you know, lighter scoop. I love that for you. I really do. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Perfect. Okay, 20 grams of lightener mm -hmm. for the record. Yeah. Well, 22, but we'll just... We'll oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah, and then tell me, developer-wise, Yes. we've got our 7 and we've got our 20 here. Okay. So... I probably, because I'm just starting out, yeah. I probably would only do 7, but would that do anything for me? Let's use, let's use it. Let's okay. just see what that looks like and how fast it lifts and we can get used to it. Okay. She's got a lot of hair, so we're going to be foiling for a while, so I feel like in this situation... Totally great idea to start with seven. It gives you time. What's the worst case? I always think about that. What's the worst case if I start with seven and I'm like, oh my God, it's not lifting. You mm -hmm. can open up the foil and you can apply more lightener and a stronger developer if, it, if the hair feels healthy. So when in doubt, go lower. So we got our sectioned. I like to do a really simple sectioning. I don't get crazy with sectioning. It actually makes me feel overwhelmed if I'm like, have all these little quadrants on the hair and I don't know where I'm starting, where I'm going. It takes me too long. I like to just organically work with what's going on in the hair. You'll find that with the precision, it's so slow moving. Not okay. in a bad way. It can be slower moving, so you mm -hmm. don't have to worry about like, oh my God, I have to pull those foils out. So I love that we started with the seven so we can see a realistic salon situation of like, if I start with seven, how fast am I pulling out those foils? Am I just like having to go back the whole time? Because that's not fun either. Yeah. yeah, it'll get really bright, but you have to be constantly, you can't get through the application because you're just pulling out the right. foils. Right. I'm gonna leave her lived in. I want some um, I want some diffusion at the roots, but I don't want to tease her hair. She's got that hair, I like to call it Velcro hair. Mm. If you've ever heard of it, friends, where you just <laughs> look at it and there could be some tangling issues. I don't want to be brushing out teasing on her entire head and she's got long hair. It's 
amazing and perfect, but I'd rather not be teasing through the whole thing. I'm gonna use a combination of like teasing around her face for those smaller, more precise sections, and then in the back and everywhere else, I'm gonna use air touch. So it'll be a little bit easier to get through, it'll be a little bit easier to brush, brush out, rinse it, all that stuff. You mix this lightener perfectly. Oh it God, feels stop. great, we're spreading in the foil, <laughs> it's working wonders, I love it. That's something so important because I think we get stuck in these ideas of like, well, I mix my lightener always one to one and a half. Mm -hmm. And that's not gonna be universal across all lighteners. Even Blonde Me 9 Plus, I don't, I, I don't usually mix one to two. I usually do a little bit more one to 1 1.5, one to 1 1.75, mm -hmm. honestly, somewhere in the middle of between one to 1 1.5 and one to two. Yeah. But the lightener is just different. So it's really important to be open to the fact like, hey, I switched lighteners and maybe it's not gonna get mixed the exact same way mm -hmm. that I mix the other lightener that I'm used to. So I'm just doing some feathering there, and I love this consistency because this is exactly what I'm looking for in a lightener when I'm using it in the foil. I don't wanna be fighting with the lightener in the foil. For one, you're probably gonna get super uneven lift because if you're fighting to even spread it on all the hair, chances yes. are you have not gotten all the hairs covered with lightener. So I love a lightener that I can spread around in the foil, but that is not like dripping everywhere and like making my job harder and coming out of the foil. Yes. So this is the perfect consistency. Not all lighteners are created equal. So it's really helpful to have different things in your toolkit. Like you have the lightener that you're used to and you love and you have some clients that you're just like, hey, I am not switching it up on you. I have this down mm -hmm. and I know I don't wanna do it. And then you have some clients and you're like, you know what, this might actually be perfect for you. Keep that lightener that you use, try this and ease it in. Okay, yes. All right, we're moving up to her face frame situation here. So, she's got these little baby hairs. I'm actually gonna flick some of these little baby hairs out. I like that those are there and they help to blend the foil, in my opinion. I'm gonna do a little baby weave here. So I don't like to tease these ones because there's not a lot of hair in that, in that section. So I just wanna make sure I have some hair to paint. So yeah, I'm just bringing my lightener up here. I kind of bring it the highest up in that first foil, and then the ones going back, I leave it just slightly down lower to get a little bit of like a gradient. Okay, yes. Yeah. So that everything just blends. I am folding the foils up twice, so it's out of her face. For your money piece, how do you know how, how far back, far to, back to go, yes. Yeah, great question. Because I've had it where, mm, it's a little thick. Yeah, you're like, wait a minute, yeah. that's not what I was anticipating. <laughs> yes. Great question, and I kind of just, um, usually a good, like a really, really great rule of thumb for me is mm -hmm. I'll do those two little baby lights on the hairline, the diagonals that meet in the middle, mm -hmm. and then behind that I'll do three. Three foils spaced kind of back to back and not super thick, and that is the perfect size for me however I will say everyone's head's a little different yes. but what I usually base it on is I'll even take them before I if I'm feeling unsure about it mm -hmm. before I start foiling and I will literally just take out the hair that I'm like okay is that gonna oh, be a good thickness okay. and I'll just like okay. separate that I feel like I'm so in my my routine of doing three like this mm -hmm. you can also kind of stand to the side and see the thickness of it mm -hmm. from the side and that's a pretty good indicator <laughs> These are the details that will make this look like a little bit, that will just make it look more finished, polished, and intentional versus leaving this out, there's gonna be some dark pieces going through her money piece, and I don't want that. So I'm just gonna paint right there on the ends. I like to take the tip outs after I do them, and I fold them up under the other foils. What a tip. Friend, have I not taught you this yet? Mm, I haven't tried it yet. You guys. I'm, I'm it's going to change your life. Let me tell you why. <laughs> the thing about tip outs, and you'll, that wasn't a great example because it's so close to our head. When we, get, when we get further into this, you'll see. Yes. The thing with tip outs is that they're processing like right here. If you put, if you put a tip out on me, mm -hmm. my tip out would be processing like right here. Right. On my neck. My neck's not giving me any heat. <laughs> my neck's not helping me. People run into an issue with tip outs because they, either you do all the foils and then you do tip outs at the end, which I highly do not recommend, or you do tip outs and then you let them process here. 
And the heat from the scalp is one of the most underrated tools for lifting, in my opinion. Let's just take a peek at our foil, shall we? Shall just we? funsies. Okay, let's do it. Let's, this is our first foil. Let's see how we're looking. How we're looking and cooking. Um, wow. Look at that. Seven vol. Okay. Is that kind of impressive? Yes. I'm gonna check it, make sure that the hair feels really good. Feels great. You wanna okay. you wanna check it? See what you think? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Feels good, right? Mm -hmm. Still feels strong. Mm -hmm. Those ends are super bright. Yeah. Like she's right now, she's like at a seven, I would call her. And we're close. We're getting yeah. close. Continuing on my money piece here, getting that recession area piece again. So now we know, that's such a great test too. I love doing that before I need to mix another bowl of lightener, just testing out the, just testing out the foil, opening it up, seeing where it's at and making sure that like, okay, it's healthy. I don't need to pull it out. I'm, it gives me a really good kind of roadmap and indicator for where I need to move to next with my lightener choice. One thing that has just changed my mind about everything is zigzag parts. So I love a zigzag. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you why. Section. Now, if you are unsure about your, if you're unsure about how you, how you blend in a foil, you're nervous to try looks like this because you're like, I can never get it blended. Mm -hmm. This is a great option for that. So I got my little zigzag there. Okay. Small zigzags. I'm working with finer, finer weaves on her because I really want to make sure. I'm actually going to do it a tiny bit more angled. I really want to make sure that I get a really soft, smooth transition mm -hmm. on this angel here. Yeah. So I got my zigzaggy. I'm gonna kind of pivot with my foils, by the way. I'm planning on going like this. So that we're pivoting a bit so that up here, we have the foils a little bit more horizontal. It'll look a little bit brighter. And then underneath, we're doing on more of an angle to get a little bit more dimension living under there. So I always think about how when you do horizontal foils like this, you're getting more sheets of blonde. The hair's laying on top yes. of each other, so mm -hmm. it looks a lot blonder. Mm -hmm. Vertical foils, you're gonna get more strings of blonde mm -hmm. and a lot of dimension showing in between and diagonal back somewhere in the middle. Okay. The other thing I wanna show you is I have this much hair left in between my, my money piece and this first section, which might seem crazy and you might think, friend, <laughs> that's not gonna work. <laughs> now what I'm gonna do is tip out what's left under here and I want some dimension. I want something to make that money piece pop. So. That's kind of why I'm doing this approach here. I'm gonna take a section and I'm gonna weave. And then we're gonna get into- scoop. My little scoop. Okay. I do a scoop right there. Okay. I know. Mm -hmm. Reason being that, if this is kind of in my head, honestly. I don't know how much science there is to this and how much of a difference it actually makes. The reason is that I feel like I can get thinner sections like on the, like the side, the sides of it blend really well. And in the middle, I pick up a little bit more hair. So I don't necessarily have to do as many foils because mm. I'm being a little more efficient. Now change your life again. I'm gonna take a little bit heavier weaves under here for two reasons. For one, this is where I want there to be a little bit more dimension to pop. And for two, I know that I'm gonna use air touch and blow some of that hair out. So I just wanna make sure I like have pops and it doesn't just look like absolutely nothing. So when you are picking up your weaves, yeah, are you just going for it, whatever? Or do you pay yep. attention to your little peaks from your zigzags? That Great you question. Nope, I do it wherever. Okay, awesome. The zigzag's just there. I don't overthink it because then I feel like if I'm doing the thing, if I'm only picking up on the peaks, I kind of end up running into it. I basically just like mm. made a straight line essentially yeah. kind of. Okay. So I want the, I want to actually have it a little uneven. One thing I wanted to point out about this lightener and why I actually am kind of obsessed with lighteners that are white and not blue violet mm -hmm. is that it is really really easy to see how the hair is lifted when you open the foil like it's not like you know sometimes with blue violet lighteners they're deceiving mm -hmm. you can't really see exactly how the hair is lifted you have to kind of scrape the lightener off to get the full view of it but with this white lightener I can literally just open it up and I get a really cute clear view of what exactly the um, what exactly the hair is lifted to kind of a cool like little perk. So a couple things will help with the blend of a tip out so much. For one, over direction, because look when I put this hair back down to where it naturally falls, I've already created a gradient just because I brought it up like this. Mm -hmm. Holding the board and the foil basically horizontal to the floor. Also, I've painted the lightener on at an angle. So my lightener is painted on like this, higher up around the, towards her face, lower down in the back. So that's gonna help you so much. The other thing is weaving or back combing will immensely help you blend the tip outs. 
How does that feel? What do you think? What are your thoughts? Feels good. Feels good? Yeah. Do you feel like you'd pull that out or do you feel like you'd be nervous with your other lightener? Like, well, if I leave that, that's going to overprocess? Or what would you think if you were using your other lightener and you tried this? I would or you take open it this out. foil? You would take it out. Yeah. Yeah. I think, she, I think it's good. I was talking about how I want that perfect base. Yes. And are you seeing that, like, yellow in there, right? Yeah. That's what I want. I want that yellow. Um, I want a little bit of yellow in there because I want to have the situation where I'm not toning white hair. Toning white hair is, is not ideal for me. Mm -hmm. We are moving to the back section. Now, as I've mentioned a lot of times, I start in the front because that's where I want the most brightness to be. That's a high impact zone, very important. The back is important, but it's not as important. So I'm gonna do the back last. I like to start with just a little bit of a hairline foil here. Um, not going super, super high up. Just kind of bringing a little bit of brightness in underneath uh, her, underneath like these underneath sections, where it shows when she pulls her hair in front of her face, in front of her shoulders. Okay, so similar idea here, exact same thing. I am just getting my lightener on there. A lot of times I like to leave this one a little bit more sparse with my weave, just because I want a little bit more dimension. So that's my thought with this. A little bit more dimension underneath. Now with the back, I'm not gonna tip out as much as I did in the front. I want more dimension to exist in the back. I want it to still look cohesive, but I don't really necessarily want it to be quite as bright. I'm gonna work up the back with a herringbone placement, one of my absolute faves. Yes. Friend, you see me doing that? Yes. Okay, so a herringbone placement, if you guys are not familiar, is essentially two diagonal back foils going into each other. So they're kind of two diagonal back foils intersecting. The reason I love this placement is because it is so, so versatile to get a lot of, like some brightness throughout the whole back without having to spend hours foiling it. <laughs> okay, so I switched to bigger foils. Now let me tell you why, because I know everyone's dying to know. <laughs> um, in the back, these sections are just gonna be so much wider. This one is not necessarily, but when I get into like the meat of the back and like the bigger, sections up there, I want to take wider sections. I can still get great saturation, I can still make them thin. I just want to take, I want to take wider sections. And those foils that I was using before are not wide enough. I want to show you guys real quick, I'm checking on these front ones, almost getting ready to rinse her, but I'm going to pull out a tip out and show you guys how I like to brush out some of the teasing before I get to the shampoo bowl, which helps so, so, so much with detangling. So I'm gonna take my foil out. I'm going to just wipe this with my towel. Get all that excess lightener off. And then what I'm gonna do is just lightly separate, get all these hairs out of the way. I'm going to just gently, I'm going to just <laughs> gently separate this tease section with my fingers. So it makes it so much easier if you can go to the bowl with a little bit of this teasing detangled, just like this. You don't have to do a crazy amount. Just spread it apart with your fingers to start that process. I love teasing the tip outs because I feel like it's soft. The line, it's easier to get a great line of diffusion, like a great diffusion on the section, but it can be a real pain to brush out and to detangle. So I separate it. I'm gonna take a brush and very gently just brush through that hair starting at the bottom. Now if this is like breaking the hair off, which it really shouldn't, if the hair is so fragile at this point, just skip this step. But on healthy hair, you should really be able to gently brush through it without an issue. So let's just do a quick recap of what we did. So we used the Blonde Me Precision Lightener, which is a seven levels of lift lightener. It is amazing. We mixed it in one to two for a ratio the whole time. I started with seven volume and continued with seven for about around the face and the first two to three foils on each side. Then I jumped up to seven and 20 volume mixed together for around a 13 volume and did that until I got to about the mid back. And when I was in that top back section, I just jumped into 20 volume. And the reason I did that is because I wanted that back section to just slightly catch up with this front a little bit. And I knew I was gonna be able to get through the back quickly. So I really wasn't worried about leaving the lightener on there for too long. So we are gonna rinse her out, show you the raw lift, and then we're gonna do some toning and all that good stuff. <music> 
so let's mix up. I kind of want the, the bulk of my formula to be 7-1. And the reason why, because you had asked why, or what, why do you pick what you pick, kind of. Yes. So the bulk of my formula is 7-1. And let me tell you why. She is kind of warm to begin with. Now, I don't want to make her cool by any means. In my opinion, the dash one at a level seven, I'm not worried about it getting like blue or violet on anybody. Mm -hmm. It's just to slightly control any overly warm situations. So I'm gonna use 20 grams of the seven one. And then I'm gonna use 10 grams of the seven O so a little bit less 7-0, mm -hmm. knowing that I'm also going to add some 6-0. Yes. And then I'm going to add just about 5 grams of the 6-0, because I don't want, maybe 7 grams, maybe 7. Because I don't want it to be overly dark. Like, I don't want to darken her that much. I just want to make sure that I'm erasing the line of demarcation. Right. And I'm working on damp hair, so the water is going to dilute my product automatically, so I need to make sure that it's dark enough to erase that line. So let's, let's just do eight, we'll round up. We'll make it 40 grams even. I know, I'm very like, you know, very methodical like that. Oh, oh, oh. oh okay. 41, 41 <laughs> grams. I'm gonna use six volume lotion for her rouge melt. Lotion. And we mix this one to one, which is super easy. Yes. Not a lot of thinking has to go into mixing one to one, although you know, sometimes we get distracted, so. Yeah. But one-to-one's easy. And then we're just gonna mix up. I'm gonna start actually with the hair primer, which is a porosity equalizer. Mm -hmm. And I really, really like this. If you can use it before you, before you lighten as well. I'm just gonna spray it everywhere. Oh, you can use that before you lighten? You can use, yeah, totally. Oh. Yep, Patricia uses it before she lightens all the time. But it's a really great option to even out the porosity of the hair. So a lot of times if you have issues with toning and glossing mm -hmm. and you feel like it looks uneven or something, you know, it's just, it's not, there's spots where something got really, really cool toned, something got really, really warm toned, it helps to even that out so that doesn't happen. The question always comes up like, do you root melt everybody? Um, mostly yes. If I'm creating a lived-in color, I'm probably doing a root melt because... I just like that cohesiveness. If you look up close at this, it could probably pass without a root melt. Like it would probably be okay. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have you just hold that for me. Yeah. But the root melt just ties it all together, in my opinion. I agree. So you could do it without it, yeah. On darker bases, I find that it's really hard to do, create this seamless look without a root melt. It's just hard to get a level four to blend naturally and softly into like level nine, 10 pieces on the end. So I do like to do this on pretty much everybody, but especially on darker bases. The other thing that you'll notice I'm doing is I am applying on diagonal sections. So, yes. yeah, do you do mm -hmm. that? Yes, I do. I love it because anytime you're working on a diagonal, it's just you're creating more softness. Yes. So it's like that insurance, again, insurance okay. policies, mm -hmm. Things that make us feel confident and okay with trying new stuff and new techniques. Anytime you work on an angle, um, on a diagonal, like yeah, it's just softer. Mm -hmm. So when I'm applying this root melt, I'm pulling it down past the line of demarcation. So like if the bleach starts right there, I'm pulling it down to like right there. Just past it. I just want to make sure that I erase that line of demarcation and actually cover it. So I'm going to start, I love to do the root melt on the side. I like to take vertical sections. and. Why? Yes, great question. This is for a couple reasons. So for one, it's really easy to do if you don't have an assistant because you don't have to have anybody hold hair. Even for what you were just doing holding the hair, I would have just clipped the hair if you weren't there. Right. But it's easy for that. For two, um, I feel like it's the easiest way to avoid having lines of demarcation. Like if you're going up the side of the head this way, you're a lot more apt to have a line of demarcation than if you go vertical like this. So I'm gonna work until I'm up about uh, right past that, like right behind the money piece, and I'm gonna save the money piece for last, just because I wanna make sure it stays really, really bright up there. So I'm gonna add some clear in there. Oh, clear. 
I love, clears my insurance. <laughs> yeah. Clears my insurance policy. So I'm going to add, I am going to add about, let's do like 10 grams of clear. Let's do 15, because we're crazy. Okay, I don't know. We're crazy. getting crazy. Okay. We're getting crazy. I still wanted to do something, but I just wanted to just dilute the intensity of that pigment a little bit. I'm going to use my six volume lotion again to add the same amount of developer. Then we'll mix up. And then we'll use that around the hairline. I'm going to make my formula prominently 10-5. That's what's going to be prominently in it. And then a little bit of 9-5-4. And then a little clear. So we're doing the 10-5. And that's kind of super sheer, but a really, really beautiful color that has warmth in it. Because again, I'm not trying to take away the warmth in her hair. I'm going to do 40 grams of that. A whopping 40 grams. Who am I? I don't even know who I am anymore <laughs> at this point. I know. She's got a lot of hair, though. Yes. That's the thing. Yes. So we're going to do 40 grams of that. And then we're going to do, which, the, again, the 10-5 is that extra insurance that nothing's going to get blue-violet. I'm not looking for super ashy with her. Mm -hmm. I want to stay warm. And then I'm going to use the 954, which is that muted gold beige. And... Um, we are going to put, let's put 15 grams of that. So we're at about 55, 60. Added a couple extras. <laughs> I'm a mess. I'm a mess when I, when I mix. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. That's and then bit. I'm going to get my clear. And then I'm going to mix about 20 grams of clear. OK. So we got 83 grams total. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use the gel. OK, so I mixed up that clear in my root melt. And now I'm going to go back here around her face and apply that to around her face. Just again, this is like to soften and make sure it's not so harsh. As I especially feel like this becomes an issue with darker bases, like level three, four bases. And you want to erase that line of demarcation, but also just like level four around someone's hairline and then going right into super light can feel kind of harsh. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, we're going to start applying the gloss, the mids and ends gloss. And again, this the intention of this is not to not to correct anything. I'm really just enhancing how she lifted. She lifted to that perfect base, which is what we're talking about while we're here. Um, I am going to start in the back again. I'm not taking huge. I'm not like. I'm not being super technical about this. I am doing taking big sections. I'm just getting it on there using my hands to really blend everything together and blur it together. Do you like to just run it on everything and then take my comb and I'll comb from roots to ends and blend everything together. I want, people are always like, oh, but the, the root melt's gonna get dragged down. First of all, not so far that it's gonna affect the blonde. And second of all, I want it to get dragged down a little bit. Like I want a little bit of that blending between the two. Okay, so we've gotten this gloss everywhere. I'm gonna wait about five minutes, now like two minutes, and then I'm gonna apply it to around her face. And then we're going to rinse out. And then we're going to see the end result. And I'm really excited. For OK, so we are going to apply some product and get to blow drying. So I'm going to use the Osis uh, Grip. This is a extra strong mousse. She's got a ton of hair, and it's long. So if I want to get any sort of bounce and body, I really need to utilize products. So I'm going to shake it up a little bit. Apply some in my hand. Let it get do a little expanding. And then I'm just going to rub it between my hands and start applying at the roots. A little bit, just using my fingertips really to get it at the roots. I, I don't really put mousse like through the mids and ends. It's not really super necessary. Also going to take some and just put it in the back of her head. Kind of just rub my fingers through everywhere because this hair is really heavy back here. So I want something that will help give that some volume. And then I'm going to use this other product called Upload. It's a cream volumizer. So I'm going to just do a couple pumps of this and use it through the mids and ends. All right, I'm going to blow her out using a round brush. And then what I'm going to do is use a little bit 
I'm gonna use some Velcro rollers for body and I'm also gonna use a curling iron to give it extra body. Her hair is so heavy that if I just try and blow this out and give it a lot of shape, it's probably gonna fall a little bit flat. So I need to add a little something to help me. So we're gonna get that started and then um, I'll meet you guys back. We are back. And we have the final look here. Do you love it? I love it. Yay. Yes, amazing. We are so excited. Um, so just to recap really quick what we did. So remember we used that Blonde Me Precision Lightener, which is an up to seven levels of lift lightener. We used that starting with seven volume, and then we slowly worked our way up to 20 volume in the last few foils. After that, we let that process, and then we went with our Agora Vibrance, and we root melted with 7-0, 6-0, and 7-1. And then we finished up to get this beautiful goldeny glow on her mids and ends. We used Agora Vibrance. And for that, we used 10-5, which is our gold. And then we used 9-5-4, which is our translucent level 9 that's kind of a beige, so muted gold. We did all that with some clear and 6 volume. And this is what we got, and I am so excited. It's all about that base. Getting that great base when you're lightening is so, so important. And I hope that this helped clarify how the Blonde Me line and the Blonde Me lighteners can really, really get you there. There's something for everyone in that line. It's really, really versatile. And just dabble, just try something out. Don't feel pressured to add the whole line in overnight. You are gonna love it. I'm so excited. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. and. Thank, Thank you to you. my beautiful mentee, Maricel, for being me. here and being open to learning because I know it's hard to switch from the product that you're used to to something else. So thank you guys so much for watching and be sure to subscribe for more hair how-tos.